Hi, if my calculations are correct, you have just taken exam 1. So I'm recording this video, not ahead of time, to explain something you will see me do after your first midterm exam. So with the first midterm exam, you now have enough information to project how well you have been doing in the class. Your course grade is based on your homework assignment and your exam. So now that all the major categories are in, you have some sense of how well you've been doing and assuming that you will continue to do as well as you have been doing, you can project what your final grade might be. Now, one thing I have found in previous semesters is that up until the final exam is done, the course LMS, Canvas, count only these grades. And what it ends up doing is it counts the homework assignments, which are in the end about 40% of your grade, as being 40% of the 70%. It makes the homework grades count for more of your grade than it actually is. And I think that tends to overestimate your grade a little bit because it's counting your exam as a 30% of the 70%, which is less than half when in the end, your exam grades will count for 60%, more than half of your grade. So this is what I started doing some time ago. If you go into your grade book, I'm here as test student with some sample scores entered. This is what you will see. You will see all the assignments you have done. And at the bottom, you will see the different weights of different categories. And after your first midterm exam, you will see your midterm exam category as counting for 60% of your grade. Or the total amount that your overall exams, midterm and final exams, would have counted. The course policy hasn't changed. Your final exam is still worth what your syllabus says it is worth. But what this is for is it makes the course LMS, Canvas, Project your grade based on what the overall exam percentage is. So for this test student, you see that the test student have done a little bit better on the homework assignments than the test student have done on the exam. And this is typical of a lot of students, not, you know, 56% overall, but that people tend to do better on homework, sometimes getting close to 100% than on the exam. On the exams, most people range from 60 to 80%. Um, so really the goal of this temporary change is to make sure that while the final exam remains not available, that the course LMS doesn't give you an over-optimistic projection. Uh, before I made this change, the total overall grade for the test student without any change in the individual grades was 60% instead of 56%. Not a big difference, but if you are close to the grade cutoff, it could have, it, it could make you overconfident <laughs> than you should be. So that's the reason for uh, why I temporarily changed the appearance of the midterm exam weight. And I think this works well enough for most students. For most students, what you get on the final exam will closely be reflected in your midterm exam grades, and this will give you the most realistic projection possible. But I have gotten some feedback from some students, and this feedback is based on the fact that what I do here is disabling a feature of Canvas. Canvas has a feature called What If. So um, if you are using the what if feature, what you could do is you could enter a what if final exam score um, to figure out, okay, what do I need to get on the final exam to get an A in the class? And because I have zeroed out the percentage for the final exam, you actually can't do that. Uh, no matter what score you put in for the final exam, that won't affect your total if you are using the what if feature. So this is uh, for a small percentage of you that are obsessed about your grade. Um, so what I thought I would do instead is teach you how to calculate your own weighted average of your overall course grade. 
This is going to be a quick statistics lesson, basically. Uh, I will start out with the formula so that if all you want to know is the formula to use to calculate the weighted average, then you can just watch that and you can skip the rest of the video. But for those of you who might be interested in calculating weighted average for other things in the future, I will give you a little more detailed explanation. So. Let me take a two screenshot of this test student grade to use as numerical example and we'll get started. All right, here are the two screenshots. The first is the screenshot of the scores by category and second is the screenshot of weights by category. I selected these two screenshots of weight and the scores because what you are going to need to apply the formula I will give you. So this is the formula for the weighted average. Weighted average is the sum of weight times each value divided by another sum of weight. So that's the formula. If all you want to do is calculate your own what if score, then this is what you would use. Let me uh, demonstrate it with an example. Let me copy these weights up to the first screenshot and kind of line them up so that they match. All right, uh, this uh, roughly matches. The word weight is not on the screen anymore, but please remember that this green thing here, this is the weight. So applying this formula, let's see if I can calculate this 55.83% just to verify that the formula works the way it's supposed to. So using this formula, the average is supposed to be the weight of questions and exercises, 20% or, being careful here, 0 0.2 times, I can keep the next percentage as percentage, 76.07% plus the weight, 0 0.1 times 60% plus 0 0.05 that's 5% times 66.67% plus another 0 0.05 times 85.71% and almost there, 60% or 0 0.6 times 45%. All of this divided by the sum of the weight, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.6. By the way, if we made sure that these added up to 100%, then these should add up to 1, which means I don't actually have to do this division. But in cases where you don't have the weights adding up to 1, then doing this division makes sure that um, um, make sure that your average is normalized, that's the technical term. Alright, let me do this on a calculator and write down the result. If you want to verify, you can also do this on your calculator. Alright, here's my calculator. And with all these numbers put in, I get 55.83. That agrees what Canvas calculated, so it's probably working right. Now, if that's the only thing, then you wouldn't bother with this exercise. This is so that you can project um, how well you need to do on the final exam in order to get the grade you want, for example. Um, so this is what I mean by your own what-if calculation. So here, I am basically assuming that I will have same grade on the final exam as on the midterm, 45%, and that results in a C. <laughs> so let's try to see what would happen if we studied real hard and got a very high final exam score. So let's say, for example, instead of 45%, we get 90% on the final exam. But because we do this so late, nothing else really changes. Then we need to make sure that we are using the correct weight. The midterm weight should be back down to 30%, and the final weight should be the correct final weight of 30%. So here, all the other numbers stay the same, but instead of 0 0.6 times 45%, I want 0 0.3 times 
45%, that's the midterm. Another 0 0.3 times 90%, that's the new final score. Let me put that into calculator. All right, this is the result of calculation, 69.33, which on the grading scale I use is very close to a B. So this is how you can run your own what-if calculation. This is the formula for the weighted average, and you use the weights that are in the syllabus for your own calculation of, hey, what if my final exam is higher than what I am assuming, which is that your final exam will be similar to your midterm exam. So if all you want you to do is do your own exam score projection, then that's all you need to know, and you can stop watching this video now. Um, what I'm going to do for the rest of this video is a little bit of explanation of this formula. I thought, hey, that's a kind of complicated formula, and um, it covers a very useful statistical idea. So I thought I would give you a little bit of an explanation of where the formula comes from. All right, so if you're still with me, you are here because you want to learn about where the formula is coming from. So uh, let me start off with something that everyone here knows, which is the idea of average. Everyone here knows how to take the, for example, average of, let's say, three numbers. Three, four, seven. Then what you learned is you add them together. Three plus four plus seven, and then divide it by the number of numbers you added, which is three. I probably shouldn't have chosen that three, it's very confusing. You do the calculation, you get 14 divided by three, or 4.66, and so on, so let me round it off to seven. All right, now here what I really want to tell you is what this formula really is. So I left a little bit of space in front of each number so that I can reveal what had been hidden so far. What had been hidden so far is the explicit idea that as you're adding these three numbers, they all count to the same amount. So really, you would say, well, three gets one vote, so it has a weight of one. Four gets one vote, so it has a weight of one. And seven gets another vote, so it has a weight of one. When you express it this way, it might be a bit error where this 3 comes from. It's the sum of all those weights. So let me replace that. 1 plus 1 plus 1. I haven't really changed anything here. You do all this calculation, you're still going to get 4.667. But now having broken out the average, I can introduce a procedure for what we are going to call weighted average. So this is the idea behind the weighted average. Now you don't see this in a democracy because everyone has equal vote, but you see this on, um, for example, corporate governance, um, where you get more votes if you have more ownership in a company. So you could say, well, this four is just so much more important than the other two numbers. So four gets more weight. Let's say four is um, three times as important as the other two numbers. Then the weight that four gets won't be one anymore, it'll be three. And we have to correct for that also in the denominator. So the one that used to be assigned to four should now be three. And let me rerun the numbers here. All right, here's my calculation of the numerator and then the denominator. When I say equals, I get 4.4. So that's the weighted average. And this is very versatile because you can imagine weight of other things changing. Maybe seven is actually more important. So instead of seven having a weight of one, maybe it should have weight of 10 then make sure to change in the denominator that 7 has a weight of 10. Then you can kind of imagine what would happen before doing any calculation. Because we are making one number count for more, the overall average will move closer to that number that now counts more. So let's put in the numbers and see what we get. 
All right, let me hit equals and let's see what happens. 6.07. So now the new average is closer to 7. So that's the idea of weighted average. It's quite simple idea once you learn it and it occurs in a lot of places. Something that we are going to learn pretty soon called the center of mass, that is actually a type of weighted average where the weight is the mass of, uh, sorry, these terminologies are kind of mixing up and getting a little bit confusing, but center of mass is a type of weighted average. And in quantum mechanics, we have something called expectation value. That's another type of weighted average. So this is a statistical concept, but it comes up in a lot of places in physics and it's uh, useful to know. <laughs> Not that it's required, but it's useful to know, which is why I want you to take this chance to explain where the idea of weight and weighted average comes from. Oh, one last thing. So here we didn't actually try to make sure that the weights added up to one. We just uh, put that in the denominator. This is something you can always do. Um, if you normalize your weights, make sure that they all add up to one, then you don't need to have this in the denominator and it'll just all work out. But uh, putting this in the denominator is kind of, um, I guess, a way of avoiding having to do that work ahead of time by putting that in just in time at the last minute. So that's all. Until next time. Bye.